Welcome to the Savvy Social Podcast, the show that blends stories and strategies to help businesses create engaged and profitable online communities using the unique power of social media. And now your host, Andrea Jones. When you've been on social media for a long time, you know two things. The rules are constantly changing and there are no rules. And that comes from today's guest, Lindsay, aka The Radical Connector, who's going to talk to us all about the joy they're having on TikTok. It is so fun to watch. Lindsay, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you. Yes, honestly, I enjoy consuming your TikTok content. So I'm excited to get super nitty gritty and go behind the scenes and how you're creating it. But you Mm -hmm. recently decided to go all in on TikTok. Talk to me about like that decision making process. So it's interesting because for my business, the radical connector, I'm not super active on social media. I'm, I'm a dabbler. I'm a lurker, but I did go on to TikTok under a bit of a a fun side passion project called fantastical fatty. And it's all about fat joy activism, fat liberation, and honestly, a lot of joyful movement. We work out a lot together and it has been really fun to play on social with no revenue streams attached to help me really take the pressure off and just have a sort of a no pressure, no consequences uh, approach to TikTok. But it's also totally opened my mind up to how I can re-engage under my brand, under my business on TikTok in a much more fun and relaxed way than I was, you know, two years ago when we all first started hopping on. Yeah, I love the fun too piece of it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I want to know, because I know you do like live workouts too. Yeah. Did you just start off kind of doing that or how did that account? Like what content (laughs) were you creating first? Um, (laughs) So... It was, it was all, it was all of it. Like I, I have been going live on social media since you could go live on social media, right? Like, I mean, although, okay, to be fair, when Facebook lives first started becoming a thing, it sounds so ridiculous to say this now, but it actually took me almost a year, (laughs) almost a year to go live for my first time. I was so in my head about it. And I also think that's like the ADHD, like my brain needs to, to, to see things and, and think about things and make lists multiple times over before I can take action. So it took me forever. But once I finally ripped that bandaid off, going live is so fun. I go live anywhere all the time with whoever it is. It is the best. So when I started doing TikToks, it was just a a natural thing. And so On TikTok, you have to have at least a thousand followers. So I was just like pushing to get to that thousand so I could go live. And then, yeah, the, the workouts have really evolved into, into a really magical space to connect with people. TikTok is one of the best apps right now for connecting with genuine, genuine people. And so not only am I meeting lots of people, side note, (laughs) I just remembered this. I, I found an intern from NYU who was involved in social justice work. Um, I was I was live one day talking about my work in anti-capitalist entrepreneurship, consent-based ethical sales strategies. And the professor from NYU was like, I have somebody looking for an internship, and I think they'd love to meet you. That's so, amazing. Isn't that, isn't that wild? I know. I'm, I'm so I'm so flippant excited. But that's the beauty of going live is that you're you're it's not just a rehearsed, you know, dance or clip or beautiful quote, which are all really important, but it's this moment to really be present and connect and, and build that no leg trust, let people get to know you and you get to know them. And then also side, side note from a strategic perspective, if you're on TikTok and you go live, uh, the app pushes your content mm. to the, to the search, to the follow FYP, right? For you page. So like strategically, it also makes a lot of sense because I come off those lives, no matter how many people actually attended. And I have like 30, 40, 50 new notifications in that hour. So like, it, it's awesome on many fronts. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, the, the piece about being present too, I think is key because it's so easy to just, you know, scroll and consume, but there's this mm. interactive element to live streaming or live video that is interesting. Um, and I think it's kind of like that missing piece that we all crave when, when we're looking at social media. Yeah. 
Yeah, Yeah, 100%. Because even when you pop on other people's lives, there's that moment of saying, hey, and especially again, and and I know we're talking about TikTok, which is awesome because I don't have to talk about the other apps, but on on TikTok, um, because of the way the algorithm works and the way that it puts people into circles and those circles interconnect with each other, you tend to be shown and are shown to people with a lot of common interests. So it really goes a long way in, in building rapport quickly. And then, so yeah, when you see other people that you follow go live and they recognize you and you recognize them, it is like walking into a coffee shop and seeing a friend across the way that you pop over and say hi to as you, as you move about your day. Yeah. I love the coffee shop analogy, because especially during the pandemic years, mm. um, the pandemonium, we, yeah. we craved that connection and yeah. the community that you've built really feels like a supportive, vibrant community. So, so in yeah. between the lives, how frequently are you creating a content? And I want to kind of dig into how you get inspired. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So oof, content creating on social is a lot of work. As you know, it is a lot of work. Um, so I take a very sort of like laissez-faire come as you are approach to TikTok. And again, that is such a different way of creating content than we have been doing up until now. It has always been about being polished, being together. And now, like the other day I had a shower and I was deep in my thoughts and I popped out and realized I hadn't washed the soap off my body or out of my hair. (laughs) And so I wrapped a towel around myself and went live on TikTok and made a joke about it. (laughs) I love that. And and that's the kind of, you know, content. I'm I'm a very reactionary person, not as in, oh, I'm angry. I'm going to do a rant, but more like I I respond. Maybe I should say I'm a responding type person. So I, when there is something for me that I feel compelled to respond to, I will, even if it's silly or if it's serious. And so that is very much my approach. There are people who do skits, who do well, you know, dances and scripts, and they really go all out with professional cameras and editing. Uh, that's not my style. I just go live. And again, I are go live slash record. And I will say again, that's a lot of because of being ADHD, being neurodivergent. I can get in my head really quickly. Like I have 600 and something drafts in my TikTok folder. Like I can really get in my head. And so TikTok has been amazing at pushing me to act now and not be stuck in my head and stuck overthinking and also being okay with things that are imperfect because unlike Instagram, once it's live, you cannot go back and edit. (laughs) So it's Mm. like, Oh, I guess that's out there like that. That stupid spelling mistake or whatever. (laughs) Right. I wish you could edit captions too. Like, like you're, I'm like, Oh my gosh, can this be a feature? But eh, once it's done, it's done. And I think there's something to that about, like it's a reflection of humanity. And I think the way that you're approaching it is that reflection of your humanity. Do you think that this kind of less, I wouldn't say less polished because you, you do, you definitely present well, uh, but it's not, it doesn't feel like you've overthought it. And you, Mm -hmm. and you mentioned, you know, you have the 600 drafts. So, you know, what do you think about the way that you're presenting this information? Why do you think that really works and resonates with people? Okay. So a couple of things you talked about being polished without being polished. I do think it's still really important to have charisma, to be well-spoken, to get to the point. Um, you know, it's short form video. We cannot give five minutes of context. We have to get right to the point, which is complicated when you're talking about big issues and nuanced issues when you only have a minute, right? Especially at the intersection of privilege and, and, you know, and that, and that I say would say it's where I get the most stopped in my tracks. Am I considering this from all angles? I can't possibly consider this from all angles, yeah. right? Am I being mindful in my words to not take a privileged approach and not think of how this might affect other people, right? So yeah, like you want to be well polished or sorry, you want to be well spoken. You want to be to the point, but you also need to be considerate of what you're saying and, and those perspectives as well. But in terms of also, just like how, how do you show up and how do you connect? I think it's, it's, you know, in the space of fat liberation, in the space of fat joy, 
it is such a polarizing topic. You wouldn't mm-hmm. think it is, but it is. And there are, even within the fat liberation movement or body positivity movement, there is so much polarization and so many different angles and perspectives to look at things from. And so in a lot of ways, it's an easy thing to talk about because it's so big right now and so hot right now, right? Getting yeah. into this size inclusivity, unpacking our socialized fat phobia, you know, When you have, I'm getting to my point, I'm trying to weed through my point, but when you have something important to say, how can I say this? There can be a lot of fear when you're just starting to use your voice on these things Mm. and you just got to do it. Like you just got to start and be open to, be open to being called in, be open to being called out, be open to getting it wrong and coming to it with, with an openness to learn and hear other people's experiences as well as being vulnerable enough to share your own. And so just the act of creating TikToks has forced me or given me the opportunity to get over a lot of my own insecurities, a lot of my own fears to be able to put myself out there. And I guess that's, I guess that's the crux of what I'm saying is you have to be ready, willing, and have the courage to put yourself out there and talk about these things that matter. And, and I mean, and also you don't, you can just do silly dance videos in your bikini and you'll also get very popular on TikTok, right? It depends what you want to use it for. But if you're somebody who's wanting to use the platform because you've got something to say and you want to be part of the change, well, when you, when you are talking about a topic that a lot of people are talking about, it, it's, it's pretty easy to get, pick up some steam and, and just add your voice to the collective. I love that you, you touched on vulnerability and, you know, making the decision to put yourself out there. Unfortunately, it is a hot topic. It, it shouldn't be, but it is, um, body size and, you know, like, accepting and loving yourself shouldn't be related to the size of your body. Do we have to explain it? We do. We have to explain it. Um, so with that comes the uh, opportunity for other people to share their comments. So I'm curious, you yeah. know, if there has been any backlash or uh, any negative results from from being this vulnerable. I know that, you know, one of my good friends signed up for TikTok and one of her videos went viral, got a bunch of hate. And she's like this is not my life, deleted it and never went back. And I applaud her for that uh, because sometimes the, the, the comments can be aggressive and, and um, yeah. yeah. So, so talk to me about, you know, what you've experienced and how you navigate hearing the opinions of others, especially ones where they're never going to change their mind. Yeah. And it, yeah, like I, I feel for your friend and I, I know Thankfully, I am not big enough to get the amount of hate and, and whatnot, but I still get it. And it will still continue to come as I grow. Last summer, um, Taylor Swift put a video out where she had a really, um, like a fat phobic sentiment within her video, a fat phobic visual. And (laughs) at the time I had COVID and I was in bed scrolling TikTok and everyone's tagging me and I see this thing and I'm like, what the hell? Taylor Swift, really? Do you not think that you have fat friends or sorry, fat, fat audience members, fat fans? Anyways. So I made a response video to it and I'll tell you those Swifties are no joke. And, and I spent probably, I don't know, eight hours making response videos and responding to comments of people who just were like, raw. And I woke up the next morning, made a couple more videos and then realized, you know, this is not how I want to spend my time. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to educate people who don't want to learn. I'm Mm -hmm. not here to convince somebody who is filled with hate to not be filled with hate. I'm not, I'm not here to, to convince insecure people to work on their own (laughs) insecurity so they could be better humans. I'm just not here for that. And so I ended up deleting a bunch of videos, except for the ones that I wanted my own community to still have access to and, and to, and to hear and to see. Mm -hmm. And I, it really helped me shift my mindset to, I am here to talk to the people who want this information. I'm here to talk to the people who are in bigger bodies who want to take up space, who want to love themselves, who want to 
like also learn because I talk a lot about the reality and the, and the truth and the science behind weight and weight loss and weight gain and diets and toxic diet culture and the the poor health that dieting leads to and that being bigger doesn't mean that you're unhealthy. I talk about all these things, right? So that's who I'm talking to. And anybody that comes on and tries to bully or hate, I just delete and I block. I don't engage. And I find when I do that, it, it, it stops. When you get creators who engage with the trolls, those fights go for days, yeah. days, those fights will go on. And that's not where I want to spend my energy. So I just don't engage. And there's a lot of people that don't agree with that. They think that I should be, but no, I, I don't, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for you. Any of my TikTokers. <laughs> like, <laughs> I also talk in TikTok sounds anyways. So, so, <laughs> you know, right. Like that, the first part is sort of like how I handle it. But I also want to talk about the fear that I had. Mm. because I used to have so much fear that these trolls, these haters would come on and bully me and I would die. I would break apart because of the mean things that they would say to me. And so that stopped me from going on, like creating content around this for a long time. That stopped me from even embracing being a fat person for a long time. But through my own, you know, fat liberation journey, my own process of, of learning and unlearning and loving myself now, when people try to bully me on social media, it's like they have no power. Like their words, first of all, they all say the exact same thing. It's all yeah. scientifically and factually untrue. And it's like I could hear them just repeating the same garbage that we've been all hearing for years and years and years. And it's not even true. And I'm like, you know, I don't think your intelligence is, is very high. I don't think that your capacity to learn and also people who love themselves and are secure in who they are, don't try to hurt other people. Mm. So I also see these people living in that misery and that self hate that they're projecting all over. Cause you know, hashtag therapy. And so, <laughs> and so it's really interesting to, to see that shift in power, to realize I'm the one with the power because I'm just creating a silly little video. And these people are, are getting so riled up that they have to come and make a comment like babes, if someone's trolling you, you're the one with the power in that position. Just you go ahead and delete and block because they do not matter. And you cannot let them stop you from saying what you got to say. Yes. For those of you listening, I'm like giant head nodding over here. Yes. Because uh, it is, I think we all go through this, e whether it's one comment, whether it's even like reading comments on someone else, someone mm -hmm. else's video, there is an emotional response that we have as individuals yeah. to reading something that or hearing something that we don't agree with. Yeah. And it does take a huge amount of self-respect, self-love, self-appreciation to yeah. not self engage, self-worth. Yes. Yeah. To not engage. Um, I was actually just, I had a client just to this weekend, um, recording this on March 14th. So it happened like March 10th. Um, one of her videos took off and like the comment section, people were just being racist, like straight up, mm -hmm. like, not even a micro aggression, macro racist, yeah. like, and it's mind boggling to me, the, the people who would say that, but I do think it comes, like you said, from a place of deep hurt, like they're hurting somehow. Yeah. Um, they feel attacked, even though the video wasn't for them or about them at all. Yeah. <laughs> they feel attacked and feel the yeah. need to leave these comments that are, that are just hateful. And so I feel for them and I love your approach. Block, delete, move on. You mm -hmm. can't change their minds. Yeah. Oh, love this conversation. Sense. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to dive more into your content creation strategy as well as some success you've seen. So we'll be back soon. Interrupting cow. Moo. I'm interrupting this podcast episode because I know you're here hanging out with me and you're interested in taking the next step in your social media strategy. Maybe your social media has gotten a little stale. Maybe you're looking to revive it. Maybe you just want to tie all of those pieces together. Well, I've got a super sweet gift for you. It is a free course that's going to walk you through step by step how to build a social media strategy that you'll actually stick with. One that works for you and your business. One that won't make you feel like you're on this content creation hamster wheel. And it'll help you leap 
and jump into a social media strategy that is sustainable. So check it out. It's at onlinedrea.com slash free. And when you sign up, you'll get a super sweet bonus of uh, done for you captions, graphics, and more. Again, that's onlinedrea.com slash F-R-E-E. All right, back to the episode. We're back. I want to dive more into how you create content because as you mentioned, it comes from a really inspired place. What do you do in those moments where you're not inspired? Are you, are you going back through the drafts? Like, tell me about it. Yeah. Sometimes I don't create because I don't want to. <laughs> and I think that's a really important, um, empowered stance that we all take with our relationship with our, with social media. Mm. Uh, if you don't want to, you don't got to. Right. And let me tell you, your account's going to be just fine if you don't post videos for a few days. In fact, you might come back and find you've got more followers and more growth because you've had time to breathe. You know, your posts have had time to do their job. Right. So when I don't want to, I don't. And I'll, I'll tell you, if you're somebody who menstruates or has, has that sort of female hormonal flow, you are going to have times where you're like super creative and, and like high energy and want to do it. And other times where you're like, nah, I'm just going to stay home and watch Netflix with my water bottle and chill yeah. out and eat some nachos. Right. Like, so really it's like, listen to your body, listen to your, your capacity in those moments. And if you don't want to, you don't got it. But when I want to, and I just don't have anything inspiring me, I will absolutely um, go through my drafts and and pull out stuff. I just had a silly little, <laughs> a silly little post take off and go semi viral for me. So I got about, I think it's about 169,000 uh, views right now, which for me is a lot because I am still a small creator. I'm just new in the game here. But it was a sound from July. It was a trending sound from July. And as you said, it's now March. And I was like, I don't know if this is going to do anything, but let's do it. It was a seven second clip and absolutely took off. And the reason it took off is because it was so relatable. Mm. Um, for those that are curious, the sound is a trending sound and it's, I need to talk to a fat person. <laughs> I need to talk to a fat person. And it's me, uh, doing a yoga pose, downward dog, when they tell you to, to, you know, step forward between your feet. <laughs> and because if you're in a bigger body, you can't, there's no room. Your legs, your thighs, your stomach, there's no room. And so this highly relatable post completely took off. And so. I absolutely go to my drafts. The other thing is, if I'm not feeling inspired, is I go to my comment section and I make response videos. Oh. So, right? Yeah, yeah, I make response videos. It's like, it's like, you know, <laughs> again, strategically, it helps the original video because it's giving engagement. It's, it's linking the back. So strategically, it's good. But then also, it's like a, a really, I'm going to use the word lazy, even though laziness does not exist. It's like a lazy, simple, n no a mental load type of way to, to create content. The other thing I do, the third thing I do is I do a lot of voiceover content. And mm -hmm. so I might do something like throw on my gym clothes, hop on my bike, lift some weights. Literally, it's not a full workout. It's like little snippets here and there that I piece together. And then I'll do a voice over with something that's on my mind or something that's inspiring, right? Like, you know, some, some sort of empowering words of affirmation or lately like I've been up in bed at night because I can't sleep because of this darn time change. And I'll <laughs> just like piece, piece together, um, videos that I already have in my phone. And again, I'll just use a trending sound. Like there's so many ways to create content that is low mental capacity that yeah. is still highly impactful. If you are sharing something relatable or, you know, using words of affirmation to empower or talking about something that is just in of the moment, right? Yes. Like, oh my gosh, creating content does not have to be hard. Yes. Get that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Yes. Yes. I think because you have the two businesses or two accounts, mm -hmm. I don't know if the other one is a business just yeah I know radical connector is yeah um but because you have two different accounts you have this duality that you can play with um you can have fun and you can create the content that feels good for you to create yeah. um I'm curious about how you split your time so how much time do you spend creating the content I wish I could say I was one of those people who has a spreadsheet and like perfectly manages their time and says, these days are for this and these days are for that. But that's just not the case. And there has been a lot of self-acceptance work around that for myself to just let myself be the type of creator I'm going to be. 
And so sometimes fantastical fatty feels really alive for me. And that's where I'm focusing most of my time. And other times the radical connector is really alive for me if, from a perspective of creating content. Mm-hmm. And so that's where I'll pop on and I'll, I'll batch create. I'll, I, I'm a big batch creator. When I'm in a mood, I'll just like record, record, record a bunch of different things and I've got them. And so I might be on a real thing where I'm getting passionate about anti-capitalism and entrepreneurship or, you know, consent based sales or marketing hacks. Like I'll just get in there and, and batch create stuff. But I'm, I, I would be lying if I said there wasn't a rhyme or a reason. Like I really, mm-hmm. I just, wherever I'm feeling called in that moment is where, is where I put the time in it, where I put the energy in. Sometimes I find the weekends um, or evenings is when I do the most with fantastical fatty only because during the week I'm working. Yeah. Right. So, so that's my answer. And it's not a nice, neat, tidy. Here's my strategy. Here's my spreadsheet. But again, I will refer to if you're neurodivergent and somebody who gets overwhelmed and lost in things that are complicated and require multiple steps, you'll never get into action. Yes. And so I just, I, I prioritize getting into action and, and going where I feel excited versus spending hours and losing enthusiasm and excitement and passion because I'm working on a stupid Excel spreadsheet. Yes. Honestly, this has been the trend on this podcast for 2023. Like Mm. our trend right now, and I'm glad that we're here (laughs) is to create from an inspired place and um, to move forward with imperfect action. You know, yeah. and I, and honestly, social media trends are supporting this as well. We don't need the, you know, fancy lights or the best cameras or, you know, the studio production with the scripts. Yeah. We want a real person who's showing up in a real way. And sometimes that means we may not have any content for that day. And it's okay. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter what size the creator is. When I've talked to different creators and they can have like a million followers they're all winging it. We're all winging it. When you get more follow followers, if you are monetizing your account in some way, and then you can pay people to support you, right? You can pay people to do the editing, to do the captioning, to repurpose the content on other platforms. Like, don't get me wrong. When you're making money and you can hire people to support you, you know, great. But I think, I think by TikTok's very nature, it attracts people who are a bit of a hot mess and that's kind of working for them. Yes. You mean all of us? <laughs> like the world? <laughs> like humankind? <laughs> yeah. That's honestly, this is what I love about the app, especially as a marketer. Um, I feel like marketers ruin things. Um, I don't yeah. know if you agree with this. <laughs> That's a saying, right? Marketers ruin everything. <laughs> yeah, we we come in and we we have the formula, we have the step by step process, we have the post this at this time on this day. And what I love about TikTok is it completely yeah. shook things up. You know, we. Yeah. We don't need the perfect schedule or the mass amounts of content or, you know, the, the, um, script. We want people who are real. In fact, we want to see a little mess up. We want to see a little hot mess. Yeah. Like we like it. Cause then we go, Oh, good. I'm not the only hot mess here. Great. Okay, right. Cool. <laughs> well, you know, that used to be early TikTok strategies. And I don't know if people are still doing that, but people would intentionally misspell things, mispronounce things, mess up to get people to go into the comments and correct them. Um, yeah. Um, because it would increase their engagement. I remember that being a strategy. And honestly, my perfectionist brain was like, no, I don't care. I can't do it. I can't. I can't <laughs> not do <on> purpose. it. <laughs> no, not on purpose. If it just happened, sure. But like, not. I'm not for that on purpose. That's yeah. so funny. <laughs> um, so I'm curious, you know, with Fantastical Fatty, the Radical Connector, you know, what success have you seen in your personal life and in your business? Yeah. So, oh my gosh, Fantastical Fatty. I have started a podcast now from it and I am just meeting tons of great people, uh, making lots of great connections. It, it, I am still finding my place within the fat liberation movement, but I am leaning towards wanting to tackle size inclusive seating at like that venues and theaters and, and things like that. That's sort of where I'm like, Ooh, I really want to get into this. Yeah. Um, and that came from a post that I shared asking where are all the fat people? 
and got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of most de- oh. of the most depressing comments I've ever read in my life. Literally, mm. I had to take two weeks off. I it, it gutted me. And I was like, we need to get in here because oh. fat people are hiding. They're not coming mm. out because society, is, it doesn't make space for them. Literally cannot fit into society. And that is not okay. And so again, working my way through TikTok, making these really great connections. This is also putting me in touch with organizations and people who are doing this work. So it allows me to get involved in the things that I am passionate about that are not tied to a monetary benefit. These are things that I want to, I want to impart change. I want to have an impact in in my short time on this earth. And so from that perspective, it's, it's, it's just been, it's been really important and it's going, it's continuing, it's continuing to go. Um, For the radical connector, under that, under that venue, for sure that will, will drive business. For sure that will drive my audience growth, my list growth, um, opportunities. You know, I don't know that a lot of entrepreneurs necessarily think about this, but when you're creating content, it's not necessarily the direct, I made a video, I sold something. It's mm-hmm. also the doors it opens for you when people who are paying attention see see the new innovative ideas you're bringing or the the way that you're passionate and speaking about things and creating creating transformation and movement in people you know now this opens up doors to getting on stages right to yes. getting into yeah i was like hey speaking up right like getting on stages getting into conferences getting onto panels getting onto podcasts getting book deals right like like it, it, putting yourself out there with something to say if that's something that you want Mm -hmm. You know, the monetary will come, but it's the opportunities and it's the networking and the connecting that to me is the biggest thing. You know, this is controversial in in the world of entrepreneurship. I get that. But like money is the most boring thing on the planet. Hmm. Who, Who cares? Oh, I have money. You know, listen, don't get me wrong. We need money. We live in a capitalist society. We have to pay our bills, right? Like I'm not saying we all need money. And this is why I teach entrepreneurship. I teach marketing and sales. I teach people how to grow a thriving business that supports them financially so they can liberate themselves, but then take that a step further and liberate others. And that's what putting yourself out there on social allows you to do. Liberate yourself and liberate others in whatever way that looks like for you. Yes, I love that. When when you first said money doesn't matter, I was like, wait a second. (laughs) It matters to me. But you're right. It's like, it's not the money itself. It's what you do with it, not just to support yourself, but to make a difference in society. I love that. And again, the theme of this podcast this year, I feel like is, you know, The success that we see on social media isn't necessarily monetary all the time. And I do think social media kind of messed that up. Like initially we were like, Oh, we could put one, a dollar in the Facebook ad machine and we get 20. So let's play this game all day long. And we miss some of the core, core benefits of marketing and business building, which isn't necessarily just to make gobs of money all the time yeah. or to, you know, hack the system. It's like we're dealing with people here. And I love that you've you've really focused on the people and in, in how you uh, deliver your your work. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yeah. So, and with that, I know you have a free course, y'all. If you love everything that Lindsay is saying, you've got to check <laughs> out their free course. Tell us about it. Okay, so it is called The Four Business Building Basics Every New Entrepreneur Needs to Know. And it takes it takes entrepreneurs through things like knowing your market, knowing how to sell, knowing what to do to get clients and customers. I am not a theories person. I am a skills, how to go and do this thing person. And that is reflected in this course, in this, in this little five day course. It also includes a seven day action plan. So once you've gone through it, I take you through now, go make your action plan and go do the things that you've just learned. So mm-hmm. it's, it's a, it's a great little mini course that's going to really open your mind up to why you are potentially working your butt off and not actually getting clients. Mm, yes. And y'all believe this. Lindsay's been doing this for over 20 years, right? Over 20 years. Yeah. I had to read that twice in here. It's like 20 years. That seems like 
I mean, really my whole life. So I'm one of these people who was, who was raised by entrepreneurs. I have been involved in business in one way or another in my entire life. My business itself is almost 10 years old. Um, and, but I, I am a nerd for entrepreneurship. I am a nerd for marketing and sales and specifically ethical consent based marketing and sales. And this is a system that I have developed over the years. Beautiful. I love it. Love it. Y'all check out that link. I'll put it in the show notes, uh, onlinedre.com slash 246. You can grab that link and all of the links. You got to check out Fantastical Fatty, Radical Lens on TikTok, uh, anywhere, anywhere else people should like come hang out with you online. Yeah. Like I'm on Instagram. I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. Uh, Radical Lens. If you want marketing and sales, Fantastical Fatty. If you want, uh, if you want uh, fat liberation, fat joy. I mean, I have some Facebook groups. If you want to join some Facebook groups, I got one for each, right? You can, you can find those on the website or you can find those on my social. Awesome. I love it. We'll put all those links in the show notes. Y'all stay tuned because next week we have more amazing content coming right at you, but that's all for today. Bye for now.